Hello, everyone. Uh, we're from Twitter, and we are here for the second of three presentations on Bazel and sparse checkouts. Yeah, it's a common problem. So uh, Twitter Focus is our open source tool, uh, software tool for managing uh, build-aware sparse checkouts. My name is uh, David Bernadette. I'm a software engineer on the source team. And this is my co-presenter, Walid. Uh, Walid is on the build team uh, at Twitter and is our senior software engineer and really like uh, brought this whole project together. So our agenda today is first we're gonna talk about like the difficulties of the monorepo at Twitter. And then we're gonna talk about our solution for these dif difficulties through our uh, build-aware sparse checkouts. Uh, and then Walid will talk about our different uh, basal, basal caching strategies. Uh, and then finally, uh, talk about adopting focus for other teams using uh, basal and monorepos. So let's begin with our monorepo difficulties. At Twitter, we have a very large monorepo, again, around like half a million files. It seems to be kind of common between these companies. And we have a working tree size of 6.4 gigabytes. The size of this work tree causes uh, a bunch of fundamental git commands to operate slowly, such as git status, uh, git checkout, fetch, and trajectory tr directory traversal tools, such as find. So our solution to this large work tree is also sparse checkout. But sparse checkout isn't super easy uh, to deal with directly. So that brings us to build aware sparse checkout, aligning checkouts with build graphs. The fundamental problem with sparse checkouts is that when you're trying to build, uh, build a particular target with a handmade sparse checkout, it's really, really common that you run into like file not found errors. In an ideal world, we would have a sparse checkout that is aligned uh, exactly with our build graph so that when you do run Bazel build, uh, you always build a successful package and avoid any like, missing files. So how do we get to this aligned sparse checkout? The answer is, in the Bazel world, the answer is Bazel query. Bazel query can give us, can calculate this sparse checkout for us it just needs an outlining tree. And we consider an outlining tree to be this minimal sparse checkout with only the files needed by Bazel query. Uh, concretely, this is mainly build files and .bzl files. We've seen great impact from sparse checkout. Uh, we've seen status latency go down to three seconds. Originally, it was around like 32. Uh, our typical user will see that their working tree size is about 18%, and the ch typical checkout time has decreased from about 40 seconds to eight. Unfortunately, it isn't just one big win. We find that Bazel query is extremely slow, and ideally, users run Bazel query on every checkout to align with the build graph. Five minutes to just do a checkout uh, makes the tool like kind of unusable. So now Walid will talk about our solution to this problem, uh, including caching Bazel. Thanks, David. So caching Bazel query, like David was saying, uh, we need to cache this because five minutes to check out is pretty much unusable. I'm going to be discussing two methods today that we use to cache Bazel query. The first is a coarse grains cache, and the second is a more fine grained cache. So normally, when you want to build a sparse checkout profile, you have a set of targets that you want to build. Um, and then you query Bazel to see what the dependencies are for these targets, which requires you to have you know, your working tree ready to service Bazel queries. Uh, with these two things, you can create a sparse checkout profile, which Git will accept and use to create your sparse checkout. So this is exactly the function we want to cache. 
um, a set of targets along with the state of the working directory. So that's a commit hash, for example. And we want to, you know, the value of this cache is the sparse checkout profile. So yeah, the key here is the targets and the commit hash and the values as far as checkout profile. The advantage of this is that it's pretty simple to implement. Um, you only need to do one lookup in your cache to find the necessary data, so that's extremely fast. Uh, but the disadvantage is that even a small change to your working tree can cause a cache miss. So if I make a change to a single source file, then you know, your, entire cache, your entire cache key will change and you won't be able to access the cache and get your sparse checkout. So this approach is much better when you have a set of commits that are well known um, and a set of targets that you knew ahead of time that you can build these caches for. Um, so for example, if you are pushing commits to your main branch, those are a good candidate for caches, for commits to build caches for. Uh, and the second approach that I'll cover is a fine-grained approach. So instead of caching the sparse checkout profile for the entire commit or the, the entire working tree state, we instead cache data on the granularity of a single target at a time. So pretend I have this target called edit tweet. Uh, it implements the tweet edit button, and it has some dependencies. So for example, a dependency on the button target, on the tweet target, and then maybe there's a non-basal dependency that's just a bunch of boilerplate files. So in order to analyze this and produce a fine-grained cache, we look at the build file that's associated with the edit tweet target. And this build file declares the dependencies for this target and also it declares, um, it loads some BZL files which contain definitions which are used to determine the dependencies. And we access this through a parse function which takes uh, the build file and it traverses the BZL kind of dependency tree to get all the loaded files and from this it produces a cache key uh, by mining all of this data into a single hash. And after we have this cache key, we can then just query Bazel uh, with a function like called Bazel analysis that just takes a target and returns the actual dependencies for that target. And this together is enough to make our cache. The parse that results of the parse function is critically, it doesn't require you to actually evaluate a Bazel query. You can calculate this just using textual content. Uh, from the build files and BZL files. And this forms the cache key. The cache value is the actual dependencies that we got from Bazel. So here's some performance numbers from our tool. Um, the first command is us using the fine-grained cache, and the second one is without any cache whatsoever. We clear the cache before we actually try to synchronize the working tree with the sparse checkout profile. So in the first case, you can see that it took an average of a little under five seconds to run on a typical project in our monorepo uh, to synchronize the working tree. Uh, and in the second case, where we actually have to query Bazel because we've cleared out the cache ahead of time, uh, it takes a little over 30 seconds. So that's a performance improvement of a factor of about six, which is pretty significant. And we do expect to be able to optimize further on the time it takes with the cache. Twitter focus is not just the one sparse checkout feature. It's a lot of other things that developers will be using to use to, in to integrate sparse checkouts into their workflows. So for example, by default, it does shallow clones to reduce load times um, and reduce load on your servers. It has facilities for managing old branches in your shallow clones. You can upload and download caches. So these caches we were talking about, maybe your CI machine will generate them and upload them, and your clients will actually download them so that they can have a warm and ready cache. We also have a UI for discovering projects that you may want to use uh, and easily find and add them to your sparse checkout. So we'd like to invite you all, every one of you with a big Git monorepo and you know, Bazel build graph to consider adopting Focus. It is open source uh, on github.com slash Twitter Focus. It is written in Rust. It includes a tutorial to build Bazel using Focus. So you take Focus to check out a part of Bazel so that you can build Bazel using Bazel with Focus. 
Um, it's also extensible to other build systems, so not just Bazel, if you have a different one, you can add support for that. And I'd like to extend an amazing thanks to all the people on our team who helped us get focused to where it is today over the last year. Um, yeah, so thank you all, they're not all here, but they did a lot of work to get us to the state. And thank you all as well for coming to listen to our talk, and we hope that you'll consider using Focus. Cool. It looks like we'll have time for like one or two questions. Uh, this may be a little off topic, but could you speak to the advantages of using a monorepo? Yeah, um, so monorepos, you have all your dependencies in one repository. Um, some examples of things you can do are code-based wide refactorings, which are a lot harder to orchestrate across a lot of different smaller repositories. Um, ideally, you would have just one version of every dependency um, that just simplifies you know, deployments and builds. That might not always be possible. At Twitter, we have multiple versions of various dependencies in our monorepo. Um, and generally speaking, it kind of shifts a lot of the tooling pain that you would have from dealing with many different repos, centralizes it to where a single like, team for source control can start to address those problems for everyone, rather than everyone having to use some other tools to deal with it. And I think most companies also find that they have more than just one repo. There's always like little edge cases where people want to like mirror an external repo um, or maintain a fork or maintain some open source project. Like this, you will not get access to our mono repo if you want to use this tool. So it's uh, separate on GitHub. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, how approachable is Focus to new developers? Yeah. Uh, you've been a developer for a little over two months, is that right? And you work with a mono repo at your company? Yes. Okay. Um, so we're certainly hoping it will be approachable. Uh, the documentation is in early stages, but we do have a tutorial, and you're absolutely welcome to post on the discussion board on GitHub, and we will try to you know, work with you to, uh, for one thing, get you where you need to be with Focus, and another, improve the documentation to a point where everyone can successfully use it on their monorepos. So we're very happy to work with you on that. I would say if you have uh, like a fairly passing familiarity with, with Bazel and uh, to start, and with uh, sparse checkouts with Git, you'll be in a pretty good shape. Um, and then if you wanted to extend uh, it to like some particular build system, uh, then it's gonna require just a little bit more like Rust knowledge. But again, we'd be happy to help with whatever you're trying to extend it to. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's, we can probably do one more question, hopefully. Yeah, in there in the back. Hi, thank you. Um, have you found, I don't know how far adoption is of focus within uh, Twitter, but have you found maybe dev teams are optimizing their build graph or, or their dependency graph to take more advantage of focus? Is that something you've seen happen? We have not seen that happen yet. Um, and probably the first thing we'll do is try and optimize our like spar initial sparse checkout. There's a bunch of like mandatory things you kind of need to make sure that the build system works. And just like minimizing that will uh, also like improve things probably more dramatically than having any individual teams try and like self-manage their, their build graph. Thank you. There's actually just a slide here, which maybe we can look at. This is just some other miscellaneous data. Um, at the top are some targets. There's this thing called Strata that does code generation. There's GraphQL. And these change like every 10 to 50 commits. And then the projects that people are actually working on might change like every 100 or 200 commits. Um, so we want to optimize that stuff at the top. That's core infrastructure that everyone depends on to improve these, the basal build graph. Cool. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>